Michelle Dolges, principal at the senior high, at uh, the high school, I guess is a better way to put it. Kristen Zeglin, of course, at the elementary school. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Ladies, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you both here with us. And, uh, well, Michelle, let's start it out by talking about the way that the school year has started. You've had about a week of classes now, and uh, I'm sure that you're settled into some sort of a routine, aren't you? We're getting there. Um, (laughs) This has been a definite change for the start of a school year for us. Um, We've given families the option to come five days a week in brick and mortar, uh, or the students could participate with the classes here uh, via Google Classroom, or they could do cyber. So right now we've got a little over 80% of our students in with us five days a week in brick and mortar. Um, At the high school, I have about 60 students out for um, Google Classroom. Uh, That's changing a little bit day to day. Some kids are coming back in. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, it has been a very, very smooth start to the school year. I have to say that I was so pleased. We were worried about the the mask requirement, and the kids have come back. We haven't had one issue with masks. Everybody wears their mask. I haven't even had to tell anybody to make sure they have their mask on. Um, they're just the kids are doing a fantastic job, and I'm very very pleased. Boy, a percentage like that of the kids that want actually want to be there, and their parents who have the confidence to send them to actually be in the school building says a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And I, you know what, I really think after being home for so long, the kids are ready to be back. Um, you know, we, we've made some changes throughout the high school. Um, in the cafeteria, we actually used one of our hallways and we put tables in there so kids could distance during lunch. Um, we've done some different things with arrival and dismissal. We've moved some buses and vans. Um, so my student drivers are exiting one exit and the van and bus students are exiting another. We've spaced the buses out so it kind of spreads the kids out. Um, we've done a lot of little changes, but I'll tell you what, the kids have been fantastic. And I'm sure the faculty and uh, the staff there at the school, uh, they play a really key role, don't they? They have. So one other change that we've had this year is our teachers, or our students on Wednesdays are getting out at 1210. <clears throat> and this gives our teachers the opportunity to um, work with their Google Classroom students. Um, on that Wednesday afternoon, the teachers are Uh, recording lessons um, to post on their Google Classroom. They're also reaching out to all the students and touching base with the students that are working at home. Um, It's been a change for everybody, and I I have to say the teachers have been faced with a challenge, and they really are are taking it and running with it. This is definite change for them. A lot of the teachers have never taught like this before. Um, They are keeping their their brick-and-mortar classroom and their Google Classroom running together, Um, so that if a student, let's say there's a situation where a family has to quarantine, that they can transition to Google Classroom, and then when they're through their quarantine, they can transition back to brick and mortar, um, and it's a pretty seamless transition for the students. So the teachers are having to maintain two different uh, formats, like their classroom and then their Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a challenge for them, and there, there are some teachers have had a rough week that first week, but I'll tell you, they've really hit their stride, and they're doing a great job. That's fantastic news. Kristen Zeglin at the elementary school. You might have a few different uh, issues to deal with than, than maybe Michelle does at the high school because you've got such young students, and uh, they require a little special touch, don't they? You know what? They really do, but they as well have has truly stepped up um, to the challenge. One of the things that, that we are stressing here is that we're going to do our best. And, you know, that, that means that we're all learning. And, and especially, like you said, with, with the little ones, it's all about learning how to keep each other safe and, and the best things that we can do to keep ourselves safe um, as well. So it's truly really just about, you know, teaching, you know, how we can um, keep each other safe and, and, and to do the best that we possibly can. Yeah. Okay. So for those who are in an educational environment for the first time, I'm thinking of your younger students. Uh, there are traditional challenges that you have at the beginning of a school year anyway. Uh, and parents must play just a tremendous role in getting their kids prepared, but then they get into the school building and it's brand new to them. Right. And that's why we are very fortunate. Uh, we have a, a fantastic pre-K counts program here. So, you know, our youngest students are four years old and we have 100% participation in school this year, which, you know, I'm relieved because, you know, truly 
those first couple days, those first couple of weeks, it's really just all about learning about the procedures of, of being around others um, in a school and, and learning how to walk in the hallways, how to go to the cafeteria, using the restroom, you know, some, some of these simple things that people don't even think about. Um, we are very fortunate that we have all of our kids here. And honestly, they're rock stars um, mm-hmm. from our four-year-olds to our 10-year-olds because they, they are doing so well with <clears throat> our, you know, the face shields. We have a lot of students um, in the elementary using the shields instead of the masks. It's just easier for them, and, and honestly, I just feel that it's a lot more sanitary um, as well. That they're not, you know, they're not getting saliva or anything on their <laughs> on their masks and, and using the shields instead. Yeah. Um, even we we do have a couple uh, kindergarten and first grade in our Google Classroom. Um, but for the ma- the majority of our student population um, is in school. Yeah, well, that's wonderful because, as Michelle knows from the senior high level, certainly you do at the elementary level, the uh, the 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 social aspect of a kid in school, and uh, especially at the elementary level, those who are just being around other kids, maybe for the first time in their lives, and uh, being in that sort of a structured environment has to be, uh, you know, one of the other key things about the early portion of a school year. Right. And when you think about, you know, the purpose of education, especially with our little ones, is that socialization and, you know, and, and just learning to be around others and, and to, you know, the, the conflict resolution, all of that. Those parts are just so important to a child's development. So like I said, we're just very fortunate that our that our families have confidence in us and, and everything that we're doing here to keep them safe and that that they're here every day. Yeah. Um, and like uh, Mrs. Dorges had said about our teachers, you know, huge shout out to them. None of this could have been possible without them. Yeah. We we truly have a fabulous staff from the faculty to the staff to, to everybody here working together. Michelle Dolgis uh, at the high school. Of course, you've got students who are part of the ICTC learning environment, too. There have to be special measures for them. Yes, the uh, ICTC is also, they're required to follow the mask mandate. Um, one thing that has been helpful this year is we have been able to go one-to-one with Chromebooks. Um, so IC, our ICTC students are taking their Chromebooks up to ICTC and utilizing them up there as well. Um, so, you know, that is helping at ICTC as our students. We have provided them with Chromebooks. Um, it's, it's been a challenge this year. Our tech department has done wonders this year. They've had to install um, additional, like, Wi-Fi to be able to hold almost 900 uh, Chromebooks every day. Um, they, they have been running wires from one end of the building to the other, and they have been, you know, doing a lot of work. We've put access points on the outside of the building so that people outside, uh, if they don't have Internet access, may use our parking lot to download or do whatever they need to do. Um, so it, it has been a challenge, like Mrs. Eglin said, on every person. And our cleaning staff has really, you know, they've had to change the way that they've, they're they doing things. They're now using uh, different machines to help sanitize. Uh, we've brought on a half person in the morning and a halftime person for the afternoon uh, to go through the building throughout the day and sanitize high-touch areas such as handrails, restrooms, uh, things like that. It's just been all the little things that you don't think of throughout the day uh, have been a, a big change for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Won't it be great when one day we can just talk about school? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we joked this summer. We said if only we had to think about education. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, from from Kristen's standpoint, we we love when the kids come into the studio, and especially those youngest ones, uh, and they're so proud of the reading program that they're taking part in. Uh, the senior students are you know, they've got great achievements that, that we celebrate with your school visits, and we look forward to the time when we can do that once again. But uh, just because we're not hearing about it right now, it is the start of a school year, and I know that all those projects are beginning, and uh, kids are getting into an actual learning environment and how valuable that must be for them. Yes, there's a lot of different uh, things going on. I know Mrs. Eglin, uh, they have a new reading program at the elementary yeah, you know, we would just love to have one full year where we would be able to have <laughs> to see, you know, all all of the great things that we're doing with our our reading programs. Um, you know, just to have that fluency throughout all of it. But we are starting Wit and Wisdom this year. It's it's a knowledge based reading program. It's not, you know, your traditional basal reading programs are all skill based. So. 
um, where you are working on one skill per week, perhaps, whereas this knowledge base, wit and wisdom, is it's really just building that content knowledge, that background knowledge that um, some of our students are lacking. So we're excited to be able to, to start this. You know, it's based on real books and, and really truly diving into um, topics and, and building a background knowledge for them. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, that we'll be able to have a full year of, of the program and, um, you know, it, hopefully be able to see the results. Yeah, it's an investment in kids, and uh, there's no better, no better investment than that. Uh, Michelle, Kristen, thank you so much for being with us here today. Anything folks need to know at home about what's going on at Penn's Manor, any changes or, or anything of that nature to announce? Um, we, we're trying to work within the requirements of uh, Governor Wolf's mandate as far as sports. Um, the school did uh, install a Pixelot system, and it's a camera that's in our gym, and we installed one down at our stadium so families can buy a um, subscription to watch all of our games. Uh, since we will be limited on the spectators and hopefully the House bill passes uh, that we can permit more spectators in. Uh, But right now they can buy um, a subscription to watch our games, and then the subscription also allows them to watch everybody else's games uh, who is able to have the Pixelot system. So we're, we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we're fair to everybody and we're trying to get as many parents into games as we can. Uh, like I said, hopefully the House bill passes here uh, this week. I know there was supposed to hopefully be some action on it. So hopefully things pass and we're able to permit more parents into games. Yeah, I believe that's uh, 2187. Well, Pixelot is the wave of the future, and it's here now today. Michelle, Kristen, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 1160.